Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will cover the Covenant system in Shadowlands uh, because this is going to be a huge part of the whole expansion um, and there hasn't been too much information on it that I've seen so far so I wanted to make sure that you all understand how it works, what's important within the Covenant and what's kind of not important. So once you hit level 60 you will be able to choose your Covenant between the four different ones. Um, as far as which ones you should choose, it's going to depend on your class mainly, um, if you're a Mythic Raider. If not, then just pick whichever one you like the most. Um, but once you get the storyline or the quest line done, you will get sent to your Covenant Sanctum. And within your Covenant Sanctum, there's going to be a bunch of different systems that will get unlocked as you progress through the quests. Um, mainly the Maw quest line that you pick up in your Covenant Sanctum and your Covenant storyline will unlock different systems such as like mission boards and then each covenant has like its own little quirky thing that's mostly for cosmetics um, or like little fun systems that you can unlock that you can progress weekly the main thing however within your covenant is going to be your soulbind system and your renown system so renown is essentially like reputation for your covenant and this is what you're going to be progressing every single week to unlock more and more perks with your covenant. So currently there are 40 renown levels that you can unlock and each of them gives you a different reward. So for example, unlocking the first level or, or renown level two will give you 2% stamina, but these rewards can vary from anything such as a new soulbind talent, um, new followers for your little mission table, transmogs. So these are rewards that vary from cosmetic to throughput rewards. Renown levels are capped as far as how many levels you're able to unlock every week. So this is going to make sure that you're not just grinding out Renown, uh, but it is a weekly task that you should focus on getting done every single week, even though there's technically a catch-up system. So if you miss a, a level or two of Renown, don't worry about it. Um, as soon as the Renown cap goes up for everyone, you will be able to catch up to that cap without too many uh, inconveniences. So how do you unlock new renown for your covenant? Well, there are three main ways that will reset weekly. The first one is a weekly quest that requires you to um, collect 1500 anima. And this is something that you're essentially going to be doing through doing world quests, uh, content in the maw. So in general, you should be able to just passively collect 1500 a week. The second quest is rescuing souls from the Maw. Um, and again, this is something that as long as you're doing the content in the Maw, um, you should be able to just get done. And the third one is the story campaign. Each week you will unlock a new chapter that you have to get done. And at the end of the chapter, you will get plus one renown for your covenant. So this means that every single week you will be able to get three um, renown levels that are kind of locked. And if you're an alt character or if you swap your covenants, there will be some additional quests to help you catch up to whatever renown level everyone else is at. Um, so you might not be able to catch up in a week depending on how far behind you are, but eventually you will be caught up because while everyone is only able to get three renown levels a week, you will be able to get um, four, five, maybe six, uh, depending on how many additional quests you're doing. Another reason why it's important to unlock the subsystems of your covenant, such as your um, command table, where you can send missions from, is because you might get missions that give you soul ash. And soul ash is a resource that you use to craft legendaries. So if you get lucky, you might be able to craft your legendary sooner um, or upgrade it faster than other people. Within your covenant, there are a few subsystems. The main ones that are shared across all the covenants are the command table, the anima conductor, and the transport network. Um, so the mission table, you just send out daily missions. We have, we've had those pretty much since like Draenor, I believe. Um, the transport network will allow you to get between zones a lot faster, and it will allow you to have a portal from your covenant sanctum to Oribos, which is super nice to have. And the anima conductor will just, in general, increase the amount of rewards that you get. So think of it as an upfront investment to get better world quests, uh, more resources and stuff like that later on. And the last subsystem each covenant has is kind of the special um, 
or unique one to each uh, covenant. For example, for Night Fae, you have the Queen's Conservatory. For Venthyr, you have the court where you throw the parties. And these, in general, don't give you any rewards that are useful for raiders. They're just more towards um, like cosmetic rewards and stuff like that. So in general, you don't have to worry about that if you're mostly focused on raiding and you're kind of short on time. But if you have the, the time to farm everything out, they're kind of a fun thing to do. And the special system for each covenant is pretty expensive to rank up. Um, so I definitely recommend funneling your resources into the shared system. So the table, the transport network, and the conductor. Um, and then once you're done with those, then you can move on to this unique one if you are looking to get transmog toys, uh, pets, stuff like that. And lastly, I wanted to cover the soulbind system. Um, so for soulbinds, you're going to have to progress through your covenant storyline. Um, and each time you upgrade your renown, you will unlock extra slots for conduits that you can place in your soulbind, as well as extra soulbind abilities. Um, also means that early on in the expansion, you will not have access to the third soulbind, which is like the bottom one in each covenant which means that for early heroic and mythic progression, you should be choosing your soul binds based on what's better in the short term versus which one's going to be better once I have everything unlocked. They recently did an overhaul to the soul bind system where the most powerful trait that each soul bind had is now the first one you get. Um, and it kind of branches down from there. Whereas previously, you would only get the most powerful one once you had them fully upgraded and unlocked. Um, so that's going to be a little bit easier at the beginning. And as you progress down your Soulbind talent system, you will always get choice between different abilities. Pretty much all of these are unique to the specific uh, Soulbind, but you will see that there's going to be similarities between these traits, um, between the different covenants. For example, some are going to prevent you from um, taking like armor damage, while others might actually be a throughput increase, such as giving you extra stats from weapon enchants and your food, stuff like that. So in general, if you're curious about which soulbind uh, you should pick, which traits you should pick within each soulbind, I recommend going to either Wowhead Guides or your class discords, where they typically will have those uh, options flushed out for you. But that covers the Covenant system and the Covenant Sanctum for Shadowlands. I hope this video helped you out a little bit as far as what's important to focus on within your Covenant and what's kind of secondary tasks that, if maybe you have limited time, don't need to get done in the first week. Thanks for watching this video, and if you'd like to support my work, you can check out my Patreon, which is linked in the description box. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.